now is about spec point 1.3. So the spec point 1.3 is to understand how the structures of blood vessels, capillaries, arteries and veins relate to their function. So before we can do this, we need to understand what the three parts of um, the blood vessels are uh, made of and what the function of each of those are. So um, we've got a layer of something called endothelium. Don't mix that up with epithelium okay this is endothelium because it's like an inner layer epithelium will be an outer layer so this is endothelium um, we've got a layer of elastic tissue and we've got a layer of muscle tissue and you have to be very, very specific about the role of each of these. And people are always too vague or they um, mix them up. They're not clear in their mind about the job of each um, part of the blood vessels. So first of all, thinking about the endothelium. Now, the endothelium is very smooth. It's the inner layer of the blood vessel where the blood passes through with all the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the platelets, everything rushing through there. And it's really, really smooth to reduce the friction so that there's a nice, easy passage for the blood vessels, blood, blood cells to get through. OK. Now. At some points, uh, when it's in capillaries, we need stuff to actually be able to pass through the endothelium. So uh, capillaries, we say, deliver the oxygen to the cells. So when the blood gets near the cells, it's then in these tiny vessels called capillaries and the oxygen diffuses out of the capillaries. There's actually tiny holes in the wall and the um, endothelium is just one cell thick so that um, the diffusion of oxygen and other molecules through the surface of um, the capillary has got a really short diffusion distance. OK, so we can say that that's for a short diffusion distance. And I'll put in brackets EG for oxygen to diffuse through. Um, the elastic tissue, we have to use two really specific words when we talk about elastic. So the elastic tissue is able to stretch and recoil. And the muscle tissue contracts and relaxes. And if you mix up those words between those two types of tissue, you won't get the mark. So elastic tissues stretch and recoil and muscle tissue contracts and relaxes. OK. Um, now, the elastic tissue stretching and recoiling, the reason why it needs to do that is to try and maintain a constant blood pressure. I'll explain that in a second. So if you imagine the blood is being pumped by the um, heart, the heart, the heart pumps a load of blood out and then it rests and it pumps some blood and it rests. And we call that a pulse. We can feel that, can't we, in our wrists and on our, in our necks. And that's a very uneven blood pressure. Loads of blood, then no blood, then loads of blood, then no blood. Now, if the um, blood vessels were just a solid structure, like a hose pipe, it would be almost like they're full of blood and empty of blood and full of blood and empty of blood. And that wouldn't really work. So what happens is when there's a surge in blood, when, when the heart pushes some blood out, the elastic tissue enables the capillary, capillary to stretch. And then in between... Um, beats when the heart's in its um, diastole, then what happens is that the elastic tissue recoils back in so that it's maintaining the same blood pressure. Otherwise, every time the, the blood was pumped out, there'd be a high pressure and then in between there'd be a low pressure and a high pressure and a low pressure. And that might be too much 
by the time the blood got to the capillaries, it might cause the capillaries to burst. Now, um, an artery going away from the heart, it's got such a thick wall, it's not going to burst. So the elastic tissue is not really there to stop it bursting. But what it does is it tries to maintain the blood pressure and it tries to um, smooth out those pressure surges so that the blood's going at a more constant um, pressure by the time it gets to the capillaries, because capillaries do have really thin walls and there is a risk of those bursting. The muscle tissue, we must use the word contract and relax. And the reason why the muscle tissue needs to be able to contract and relax is um, also to help maintain a constant blood pressure. But it's not um, working in the same way as kind of smoothing out those pressure surges from the heart. It's, it's kind of... Um, squeezing in if you like and relaxing um but you must use these words okay with the elastic and these words with the muscle and i can't emphasize that enough that most people just say oh muscle and elastic uh stretch to stop the blood vessels from bursting or something and that's just not enough okay so you make sure you use this specific language um in terms of the structure of um the blood vessels so Arteries are the ones that go away from the heart. So A for arteries, because they go away from the heart. So this is when the blood is at the highest pressure. So the arteries are the ones that have the thickest walls. <coughs> Excuse me. So they've got a thick layer around the edge, then another thick layer, and then the endothelium is a very thin layer because it's only one cell thick, middle here. Um, in the middle, we've got the capillaries. Now, the fancy words, not that they particularly come into your spec, but the fancy words are that when the arteries start to divide into smaller blood vessels we call those arterioles and then when they divide further into these tiny little tubes they're called capillaries okay and then the capillaries these tiny little capillaries start to join back together we call them venules and then when those small venules join together into the largest tubes again they're called um veins but you really just need to know arteries capillaries and veins but just be aware there is kind of a category in between here and here now the diameter of a vein is kind of similar to an artery but rather than having the really thick layer of um, muscle and the really thick layer of elastic, they're much, much thinner. OK, the layer of um, uh, endothelium in the middle will still be really, really thin because it's only one cell thick. So the outer layer here and the outer layer here. Oops, sorry, I've gone quite to the right place to be a bit more specific. Up to there. That's your uh, muscle tissue. The next layer in, so this one here and this one here is your elastic. And then the very thin layer in the middle, remember it's endothelium, not epithelium. Endothelium means the middle. There's this one here, in there, and this one here, and there. And it's the only layer that the capillary has, okay? The capillary doesn't have the muscle and elastic because things need to be able to diffuse in and out. Um, that's called the endothelium. Now, the last label that you're going to need to have, you're going to need to know, is the um, hole in the middle here. So the hole in the middle is called the lumen. And you can see that veins have a really large lumen. Um, arteries have a much smaller lumen. 
and the capillary is absolutely tiny anyway so the lumen there is tiny Now the veins have one last feature that the others don't have. So if you think, um, when I was saying like A for arteries, A goes away from the heart. If we look at um, the veins, the veins have, um, the veins are the ones that go back to the heart. So arteries go away from the heart. The arteries divide into little arterioles. They divide further into these tiny capillaries, drop off the oxygen and glucose, pick up the carbon dioxide and waste, join together into small tubes called venules. They join together into larger um, tubes called veins and they deliver it back to the heart. So we could say under the V for veins, that V is also for visit. The heart so that means it goes back into the heart okay and they also can say that the v reminds us that they are the ones that have valves now arteries and capillaries don't have valves only veins have valves and the function of a valve is to ensure that the blood can only go one way and the fancy way of saying that is we say it prevents backflow now, if we wanted to draw a diagram of that, if we had um, a blood vessel like this and we had a valve here, if the blood was coming from uh, the bottom of the screen here, it would push that valve open and go through. On the other hand, if the blood was to come, oops, if the blood was to come the other way. And I have my valves here somewhere. If the blood came in the other way, it actually gets forced back like this. So if it comes down like this, oh, it forces it back. It actually forces that valve shut. And there's no way it could go from top through the valve down to the bottom. It ensures that blood can only go that way. There's no way that that blood is going to come down and through there. It forces the valve shut and it just sends it back the other way again. OK, and that's the end of 1.3.